Hi everyone and welcome to the first video on this channel here in July. So I'm here to share some tips on understanding IELTS and how to get the best grades. So obviously IELTS is a gateway to any kind of academic and professional English language use or further study um, and it is a unfortunately can be um, both a gateway and a barrier for what you want to achieve so mastering it um, does become a necessity now if you don't know anything about me um, in addition to being a PhD research student and all the other things I do I am actually an IELTS trainer um, I have taught IELTS for over five years and I love teaching IELTS so that is this is why I'm very happy to share all the tips um, and all the advice that I can um, for anyone who's sitting IELTS um, or who's preparing to sit for any examinations in IELTS. Um, so very quickly, what I want to um, cover is basically, um, you know, obviously people need IELTS. It's an international English language testing system. That's the acronym. And that's basically what it does. So um, it's an exam that you sit. Um, it has modules in the four skills reading, writing, speaking and listening and then you get um, you get individual grades for every module and then you get an overall score um, and often that um, gives you access to further um, English language study so a lot of people who need to study a master's or a PhD or even first degree um, if their language of instruction where they got their previous qualifications is in English they will be required to sit for this exam. Um, other people need it for general purposes it could be for you know purposes of immigration um traveling entry into english speaking countries like the uk or canada or even to practice their profession so you may be a doctor you may be a dentist and you have to satisfy the requirements of your english language competency so it can be tricky but it doesn't need to be so the first thing i really want to touch upon is the fact that there are two categories of learner. So there are the learners who are learning English and then there are the learners who are just studying. Um, and by studying, what I mean is that you already know how to speak English. You already know how to communicate in English. You may even be a second language speaker, almost native, you know, in terms of the people I'm talking about um, are who, people who come from countries that instruct formal education in English. So countries that are Commonwealth countries like Nigeria, India, Kenya, um, in these countries, the official or second language is English. So um, a lot of people are familiar and they already know how to speak English, but they still have to satisfy the IELTS um, requirements. Um, so basically, all it is, is just, you know, studying for the exam and familiarizing um, certain linguistic concepts and um, certain structures to be able to sit the exam. And then there are other, um, the other category, who are people whose first language um, is in English and it's not something they were instructed in, um, in any of their study at any point of study. And quite often, a lot of them learnt English um, as a foreign language, not just a second language, a foreign language as adults um, or quite late, um, you know, in secondary school, as opposed to, you know, a bilingual system of education. Um, this is common in a lot of the Arab speaking world, um, in China, um, in, you know, countries, South American countries, Central American countries where um, the official language is Spanish and even Europe. And, um, you know, uh, whether we're speaking France, Italy, Spain or further, you know, um, Eastern Europe, whether, you know, we're talking about Slavic um, speaking, sl Slavic origin countries. That's right. <laughs> so the distinguishment is just useful because if you are somebody who is learning English, it will take longer to be able to prepare and sit for the IELTS where you get a good grade that will satisfy the requirements for entry into whether it's a university program or for any other general professional or um, academic purposes. 
Whereas if you are somebody who has done your degree or, you, you know, you've spent six years studying medicine um, and your language of instruction is English, then obviously it's a case of studying and just, you know, refining and polishing um, the English to the standard that is required to satisfy um, what needs you have. Um, and that's what I like to do with my students. I like to, you know, from the onset be like, which category do you fall into? Because the needs are quite different, okay? So are you studying it? Because obviously are you going to study um, the language or are you actually learning? Because like I said, it takes longer. So the time that you need will vary, you know? Um, you can do an intensive study, that is fine. Um, but if we're looking at for a period of three months, I would say is fair for somebody who is in the first category. So somebody who's studying English, whereas somebody who is learning, um, so has learned as an adult and has learned, you know, taken English as a foreign language for study, I would say you really should give yourself anything between 12 and 18 months for preparation of the IELTS. Now, of course, um, each case varies uh, de uh, depending on the individual, uh, the circumstances and your style of um, learning. But this is obviously a generalization um, and just kind of like a guideline. Um, the second thing is um, when it comes to preparing, IELTS is very structured, it's very rigid. So if you have seen um, any of my previous videos, there's one where I speak about the product versus the process approach to writing. I will link the video below because it's worth looking at. Um, now the IELTS, because it is rigid, it does follow a system of learning where you are producing um, something within, you know, very strict confines and um, the structure and the language um, and the register that you use is is pretty much set and it doesn't really allow for much flexibility. So it requires a lot of practice and a lot of trying to get your work to be um, very accurate in terms of gra grammar um, and in terms of the kind of you know vocabulary you use. So you are going to be looking a lot at examples that are like the perfect model and trying to almost replicate in order to get the highest grade. Now then people, you know, say, you know, um, because there's no flexibility, then, you know, once you've learned this, you've memorized it, is, does it serve any purpose after you've um, sat your exam? And the answer is yes. Um, even though IELTS is very rigid, it does form a basis for you. It's like a springboard for you to go on to further um, academic study in English. Now, of course, there are certain um, vocabulary that are very IELTS like and they're canned and they're very you know produced and sometimes you know we do need to kind of put them aside and be like okay they've served their purpose for IELTS and we don't really want to use them um, for any further academic study but I definitely don't think IELTS is useless in terms of um, moving forward and taking a lot of like vocabulary and grammar skills um, along to further education academic English study. So don't just see it as the means to just get the score and then, you know, um, as tutors, as English language tutors, we do kind of um, put pressure on students to leave their IELTS background. But um, the truth is there are a lot of um, features of IELTS that you can adapt and fully function, you fully utilize um, in your further academic English study, okay? So therefore it is worth looking at it, not just as something that has to be done and needs to get done, but something that is an investment of your time um, to gain skills, um, good linguistic skills in English and things that you will develop further. Just because you get the IELTS score, it doesn't end there. You will, you know, develop further. Um, and that is why it's worth, you know, getting um, the best training in terms of, you know, spending time to really refine your skills, um, especially when it comes to productive skills, you know, whether it's speaking or writing, it's a process of refinement. It's a process of, you know, drafting and um, getting feedback, then redrafting, then getting more feedback, then redrafting until you can get your work to as near as the model, um, the perfect answers. 
um, as, as possible. Um, so I think that's just what I want to touch upon um, initially. Um, this is just kind of uh, a, an intro into what it takes to kind of be on the way to get the best grades. And it is very possible um, whether you are a language learner, an English language learner, or if you're studying it because you already know how to speak it, you know, you are pretty much fluent um, and it's almost, you're almost bilingual, um, but you still need to satisfy the requirements. Um, either category, um, it is possible for you to do very well in it, um, but it's just a case of, you know, um, being honest from the onset, which one do you fall into um, and understanding that um, IELTS does take a product approach. And like I said, by product, I mean, you are replicating um, as much to near perfect um, in terms of writing and in terms of speaking. Um, and that's the process it follows. Um, but of course, within that, I myself as a trainer, I do want my students to be able to do as much refining as possible. Um, and that's the approach I take as a trainer. So um, that's all really for today. Um, this month um, on my academic community on Patreon, I am focusing on IELTS writing specifically for task one. So if you want to master that, do come over and join us. Um, like I said, the whole month of July is dedicated to that. And there is an overview you will see on the um, Patreon welcome page where you'll see what we are focusing on in terms of writing for task one. You'll see me in my next video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and of course, subscribe and share this video. Until next time, goodbye.